if I recall correctly, I first started hearing about Rust, maybe it would have been in my first year of university, so about five or so years ago. And the language only came out in 2010, so it was still a fairly new language at that point. There weren't that many projects that were using it, and since that point, the language has grown massively. On places like GitHub and Stack Overflow, it is one of the most popular languages, if not the most popular language on the platform. And as the language has grown in popularity, so has one really annoying trend, and that is the rewriter in Rust trend. Now, I am fully aware that some people are just memeing, like with, say, RTFM, and I use Arch, by the way, and all of the other tech memes out there, there are a lot of people who are just joking about it, but then there are the other people who take it completely seriously, who will go to, say, random GitHub projects and GitLab projects, and basically demand that they rewrite the code base in Rust. But you'll never see reasons directly related to the issues of the project. It'll always just be this ethereal, Rust will make it better. Rust will make the code base more portable. Rust will make the code base faster. Rust has better memory safety. And you know what? I'm going to grant all of these things. Even if they're not true in most cases, I will just grant the fact that Rust is the greatest language on the planet. I don't have enough experience with it to say that it's not. But what I can say is that rewriting your entire code base in another language is almost never the answer. There are very small edge cases where it does make sense, but for most projects, there are plenty of other ways you can get much better optimizations. So this video isn't to start a war about Rust. Everything we're going to say in the video will apply to basically every other language out there as well. I know there are some Rust diehards in my audience and some C diehards, so just please be civil in the comment section. I know that you guys hate each other, but just accept that other languages do exist. One of the issues faced by a lot of projects is unneeded or early optimization. Now, this doesn't mean that you should intentionally write bad code, but if you have a working solution that's relatively quick, and then to replace that solution for maybe a 2% improvement, it's going to take a week of effort. Is there a better place where you could actually focus that effort to maybe get a 10% improvement or a 20% improvement? And without actually doing some sort of testing, there's no way to know that what you're actually going to focus on is going to be the place that effort should be allocated to. Let's go through an example. Let's say that we have a point of sale system, and just to make sure it's extra slow, we write it in Python. And when it has a high volume of transactions, you notice there are some serious performance issues that actually affect the usability of the software. So while we could go and rewrite the entire code base in Rust, and this very well may give us some sort of performance improvement, we don't actually know that the Python code is the part that's actually the bottleneck. A far more likely problem is maybe you have some sort of issue with your database queries where they're running for far longer than they actually should be because the database in a lot of projects is going to be the most expensive part of running the code. Or maybe you have some network operations that are being made and maybe you're making these network calls far more often than they should be done and maybe they could be done in some sort of bulk fashion or maybe there's a function in the Python code that's being run far more often than actually should be and this is leading to a lot of time being spent in that section of the code base. But the important part here is that until you actually do some sort of testing, you will have no idea what the problem with your code base actually is. At some point, after you've optimized everything else outside of the language, so you've optimized your SQL queries and you've optimized your network operations and you've optimized the actual algorithms you're using, at that point, if you still have some performance issues, maybe at that point, looking at a rewrite might actually make sense, but a rewrite should never be the first option you go with because a rewrite will always take the longest amount of time. Now, if you just suddenly fall in love with Rust and you want to rewrite your code base in it, I'm not saying don't go and do that. If you want to do that, it's your code. Do whatever you want with it. My issue is with the people who go to other people's projects and demand they rewrite it in Rust. If they want to go and maybe make a pull request and rewrite the project themselves in Rust, I can respect that, but don't go to someone else's project and demand they rewrite it in Rust for basically no reason. I also want to be clear about something else, and that is that I'm specifically talking about people who take existing code bases and then rewrite that code base 
in another language like Rust. What I'm not talking about is the people who take something like the GNU utils and then want to clone them in Rust. I know there are people who meme about every application having a clone written in Rust, but honestly, I think this is a really good idea, not just for Rust, but for every other language out there. So Rust is a really popular language and it is only gaining popularity. And cloning a project is a really, really good way to learn how to write a language. Because tutorials only go so far, and at some point you will have to actually start writing some code. And the nice thing about cloning a project is you know what it's supposed to look like when it's done. It's not like, oh, you just make a game of tic-tac-toe. You make a point of sale system where the end result can sort of be whatever you want it to be. If you're trying to copy something like, say, cat, or you're trying to copy LS or anything like that, you know what it's supposed to do when it actually works. Back when I first started programming, I'd never actually considered doing it. I'd always done the sort of basic projects like I was mentioning before. But now that I'm thinking about it, this might be a really fun way to actually get someone into programming. So if you want a couple of examples of these Rust rewrites, here we have Gping, which is basically a Rust version of Ping. It adds some extra features like a Ping graph, but overall it basically does the job of Ping. Here is another one. This one is bat. This is basically cat, but with some syntax highlighting and some other nice stuff like that. Then we have exa, which is a rewrite of ls. And the last one is a rewrite of the GNU core utils. So these three here are basically taking the applications, rewriting them and adding some functionality into them. But this one is basically just a complete rewrite. If we just go back a bit, there is another reason why you may want to rewrite your code base even if it has nothing to do with performance. So let's say that you have a code base that's a couple of years old and whatever language it's written in, let's say, let's say that it's a JavaScript project written with jQuery or maybe it's a Ruby project. And as more time passes, it gets harder and harder to actually find people who actually want to contribute to the project. But if you go and rewrite it into a more popular language, whether that be Python or Rust or C or whatever other language you want it to be, it might be easy to actually find people who want to contribute. I know there are definitely people who still use Ruby, but as Rails has been losing popularity on the web, there's been less and less of a reason to actually use the language, and it's certainly far less popular than it used to be. I know there are going to be people in the comments that say, oh, there's never actually been anyone that's asked a project to rewrite in Rust, and I provide you with the textbook example of what I am talking about. So the name of the issue is rewrite library in Rust. And the issue comment is rewriting in Rust. We get a library the speed of C slash C++ combined with the safety of an expressive type system like Java. And they didn't provide any reason why this would help library, why this is actually a problem that library has. And the one comment this gets is, are you interested in tackling this? Type safety would be great to have and we've been thinking about it too. We would prefer Go instead of Rust, but we're open-minded. This is not a priority for us in the foreseeable future, but if you do it, we're happy to pay a bounty for the work. And then three months go by, and no response. This is exactly what I'm talking about. This isn't helpful. All it's doing is wasting the time of the developers of the project. If you wanted to do it yourself, that's one thing, but just asking a project to rewrite in Rust because Rust is not a reason to rewrite. But this goes both ways as well. So if say a project that you're using decides to actually do a rewrite to Rust or Go or any other language out there, don't bother them about it. If you don't like the fact that they've gone to a different language, just go to a different project or fork the project and maintain it yourself. If someone wants to rewrite something in Rust, they should be entirely free to do so if they want to. On that note, I don't really care to cover things like the GNU Core Utils clone because what, what can I say about it? It's just, you know, the GNU Core Utils, but now it's in a new language. It's the exact same thing. But when it comes to things like, say, Gping and Bat and Exa, all of these things, I think, are really, really cool projects. And if you have any other suggestions for ones you want me to try out, leave them in the comment section down below or let me know over on my Discord server or Twitter or wherever you want to contact me. 
and I will absolutely check them out. I think that's going to be everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Will, Brennan, Chico Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Pitti, Stephen, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, Subscribe, Star, Libre Pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey and BitChute if you're watching a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.